Hello, today we want to learn about how to use a good person test to evangelize. This kind of approach is not very stressful and also is a very casual way of uh, dropping the seed of concern into a person. The concern about his eternity, a concern about uh, the future, and whether that when he dies, that he will go to heaven or he will go to hell. And of course, uh, you will have uh, people saying that I don't believe in heaven or hell, but you say this is just a game, you know, just like you play any computer game. They have their rules and they have their regulation. Whether you believe to be real or not, you still play the game. So if they agree to play the game, then it is very easy is that what is the purpose of the game? The purpose is that to find out whether you are good enough to go to heaven. And so the person say, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I, uh, so you ask the person is that, are you a good person? Are you a good person? And so let me share screen with you so that uh, you will be able to understand this uh, better. So this is a good person test. And like we said here is that we ask the question, uh, are you good enough to go to heaven? Now, why we do this test is because in the, uh, we, we intend to do what we call use the law of God to convict. Of course, the law of God cannot save. The Ten Commandments cannot save you. It's the grace of God that saves you. And, but we need to use the law to reveal what sins are because some people nowadays they don't even know what sin is all about for example you know they have no idea that living together without getting married uh you know is a sin they are committing adultery um, but you know culturally you know they are saying everybody is doing it so they are doing it therefore you need the law to convict sin and then they don't present grace of God to save. Now from the Bible, we, 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 we could see how Jesus did it. In Mark 10, uh, you know, Jesus uh, was on the way and then a man came and said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What did Jesus say? Jesus never showed grace. Jesus immediately said, you know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false uh, testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. So all these are part of the commandments. So what he did was that he used that to convict the young man. And the young man said he had done everything, you know, that he was so proud of the fact that he could keep the law. Then Jesus said, why don't you sell everything and follow me? And then the young man went, away destroyed. Why? It's because he he could not do that. He couldn't do that. Because he, even though he said that he obeyed all the law, but his heart, he coveted up the things and then he still hold on to a lot of the temporal things and he couldn't give up. And he couldn't put God first. Okay? So that's how Jesus revealed the heart of people. And so in your this good person test, this is what we want to do, is to put the seed of concern into the people, uh, into your friend, and so that they start to think about their eternity. Mm. So the first question you ask is that, uh, have you ever lied? But once a person agrees to play the, the game and then to find out whether he's a good person, then you explain to him that there is a Ten Commandments and that is the rule that you want to use. And so let's see if we can go to heaven. And so you say, have you ever lied? Now, when you ask these questions, you know, many people will say, everybody lies. Then how do you answer? What you, what you answer is this way. You say, yes, I know everybody lies. But my question is asking you, have you ever lied? And you say, of course, I tell lies. And uh, sometimes I stretch the truth and... Uh, but I almost tell white lies, you know, okay, you tell white lies or whatever colored lies, uh, but you have ever lied, right? So then now, this is, this is the trick here 
or this is a technique here, right? you might not say trick, but this is a technique here, is that you have to, to ask the person and say that, so you say that you have lied, and what do you call a person who tell lies? And so the person, you know, your this friend will say, liar. Now you see, it is important for him to say it. He has to identify himself or herself. So have you ever lied? But you don't call him a liar. He got to call himself a liar. You see, because if you call him a liar or you reveal to him that, you know, when you tell lies and you're a liar, then, you know, it won't sink in because he got to hear his own voice. That he himself is telling himself that he is a liar. Okay, then you go to the next question. Have you ever stolen? And you say, yeah, you know, I've stolen. Yeah, when I was a kid, you know, I stole some coins from my mother or I stole something from the supermarket. I stole some chewing gum or I stole something from my, my, my friends. Uh, you know, I stole pencil or eraser or, you know, some of them were confessions. Yeah, yeah I stole from my office. You know, I took the puncher, I took the stapler, I took them home because my children need them, or I took pens, or you know, things like that. So they will tell you. And so you ask the question, you said, so you have stolen, and what do you call the person who steals? Then he will say, thief. Okay, let him say, he must say. Then have you ever murdered? Oh, then this one, the person say, of course not, I have not. What do you mean by I have murdered? Then you explain that, you know, the Bible says that if you hate somebody, then you have already murdered him. And then the, your friend will say, just hating means murder? Come on, are you serious? And then what you have to do, do is that you have to explain, you know, why Jesus said that. Because when you hate somebody, when you walk by him, right, you wouldn't like to talk to him. And if possible, you would ignore him. And you would cut him off from your world, right? Uh, that he doesn't exist when you walk past you and you just ignore him completely. So you have killed him in your world. So that's called murder. So, wow. That's serious? Yes. Okay. When you hate somebody, that's murder. You, you cut him off from your world. Oh, okay. Uh, so have you ever murdered? He will say, yes. And then what do you call a person who murder? You say, a murderer? Then you go on to say, have you ever committed adultery? And the guy will say, no, no, no. But let, let me share with you in, in, in one instant, right? I asked the question uh, to this guy, you know, have you ever committed adultery? The adultery and he became very quiet and he finally admitted yes I did means that he actually uh, slept with women who were not his uh, spouse and so that was easy you see but uh, for people who are who have never uh, you know done that kind of a thing then when you ask, have you ever committed adultery? And they will be like, no, of course not. And then you say that Jesus said that if you look at the opposite sex and last after the person, then you have committed adultery. And then the person said, uh, so you, you, you ask, have you ever done that? Is it, uh, you know, everybody does that. But I'm asking whether have you done that? And you say, yes. You know, then what do you call a person who committed adultery? And we'll say that, oh, an adulterer. Okay. All right. So now, so this is where you allow the Holy Spirit to minister to him. He said, and say very slowly, so do you admit that you are a liar, you are a thief, you are a murderer, you are an adulterer. Okay. Say very slowly. Yeah. And then, if you were to be judged according to Ten Commandments, would you be going to heaven or hell? Okay. Remember, it's a game. If you were to be judged according to the Ten Commandments, 
would you be going to heaven or hell? Now, the person may protest and say, no, no, I, I, I don't believe in heaven and hell. That's fine. It's just a game. Just a game. Okay. Just answer this uh, question. That in this game, you know, the evil will be judged. And then uh, the person most probably will say, uh, I most probably will be going to hell. Okay. Uh, then some others will say that, you know, I, I think I'll go to heaven. Uh, why? You would ask why. Then you go back to this one. You admit that you are a liar, a thief, a murderer, and a doubter. All right. Heaven is very pure, right? Can heaven admit you? Do you have the passport to go to heaven? You see, you know, so even when the person says that he will go to heaven, um, he knows that in his heart that he will not make it because he understands that heaven is very pure. And then that's when you <clears throat> come to the last part and you say, if you are going to hell, does that concern you? There might be a long silence or there might be some kind of uh, laughter to mask their nervousness and all that. But that is the time that when you uh, begin to pray for the person quietly and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to him. Now, there are people who want to respond straight away and they say that, yeah, I, this is a wake up call, you know. I think I might go to hell you know, if I were to die. And then what you need to do is that uh, once a person's heart is open, then you will share Christ and then you talk about how Jesus uh, come to die. But of course, you can ask a question and say, do you really want to go to heaven? And then you can say, there's a way to heaven. And they say, what way? You know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And that the only way to go to heaven is to accept that Jesus has taken away all your sin, all your lies, your adultery, your murder, you know, and all your uh, stealing, all this sin he has taken away and has given you new life. And all you need to do is to surrender all this to him. And you just need to say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. I repent. I accept your grace, the salvation that you have for me. And of course, then you can go ahead and lead the person in salvation prayer. Or if not, then you uh, can invite the person to your home cell or to your church. Uh, the best is, of course, home cell. And then in the home cell, uh, you can further work on the person because why? Is that he really needs to be a true disciple of Christ. He cannot just say it the sinner prayer and that's it. You see, he needs to be nurtured. He needs to be uh, looked after and that uh, you need to disciple him and then bring him to a saving knowledge, not a saving knowledge, but a deep relationship uh, with the Lord. And so this is a very simple uh, uh, way of reaching out uh, to those uh, people. And I pray that uh, you will use this often, And but you need to practice, okay? You need to practice is that when, when you ask the question, right, you expect him to answer, all right? What do you call a person who tell lies? And then you've got to keep quiet, keep quiet. And then let him say that he may take a while to think of a word, you know, and then you will say a liar. Okay, yeah. So, so uh, you you can use this in any language. You know, uh, you just need to uh, translate it. But the whole purpose is that to let the Holy Spirit uh, to have a chance to uh, enter His heart and let the Word of God bring a conviction, and then be sure that you bring, uh, you know, the Word of Grace and then offer Him salvation through Jesus Christ. And um, sometimes I will use the term like, you know, 
that this is a passport. Because passport, you, you can't earn a passport, right? So a uh, passport is given to you because you now have become a part of the family of God. So you need a passport. But first, you need to surrender all your sin to Jesus and believe that he died on the cross for you and that he was buried. On the third day, he rose again. And so his new life is your new life. So that is uh, this evangelism in a capsule here using the good person test. I trust that you have enjoyed this and that you will go on to practice. God bless you. Enjoy your practice.